Okay, so good morning, everyone, uh, and uh, welcome to today's uh, session on uh, sustainable commuter uh, mobility. So uh, with me today is uh, our my dear colleagues, uh, Marlene Brettenhofer from uh, AKS in the Vorarlberg region of Austria and uh, Andrea Sutterlütti from the company Habercon, and um, they will introduce uh, themselves later on. Yes, and my name is uh, Jakob Dietrichmeier, and I'm a deputy director of uh, the International Commission for the Protection of the Alps, uh, CIPRA. And we are, just in brief, an international NGO. We're dealing since uh, 69 years with uh, sustainable development in the Alps, and we're also a co-founder of the Alpine Convention. So when we look at the Alps, and uh, this is actually our field of work, which is uh, pretty nice. So from Monaco to Slovenia, and yes, Monaco is officially an uh, Alpine state. Um, we have uh, some major problems at the moment when it comes to the sources uh, of traffic. So on the one hand side, uh, we have, as you probably know, we have transit traffic on uh, of heavy good vehicles crossing from the north to the south or from the south to the north going all the way through the alps and we also have a lot of uh, tourism mobility of uh, people spending their holidays in the alps but also of people going from the north uh, to the south the consequences uh, they are clear this is of course air pollution we have a lot of noise pollution uh, land consumption as we do not have a lot of land in the alps this is uh, one of the biggest issues and we have high economic costs uh, due to various problems but then uh, we also have another major source of traffic uh, and this is caused uh, by ourselves by the alpine inhabitants and this is uh, commuter mobility or also transnational commuter mobility so uh, we as cipra we started working on sustainable commuter mobility about uh, eight years ago and now you may raise the question is cross-border or is commuting alpine specific and when you look at this uh, chart now, we have the wonderful country uh, in the heart of the Alps, uh, which is actually called Switzerland. And in Switzerland, as you probably know, the, the wages, they are higher compared to the neighboring countries. And therefore, lots of people from the surrounding countries, may it be Austria, may it be Germany, or may it be France and Italy, they commute to Switzerland on a daily basis. Uh, to work there. And of course, this causes uh, a lot of traffic. Uh, within these eight years, we have uh, developed several approaches and methods to really foster the model shift and uh, convince commuters to go to work by sustainable means of transport. And our main field of working uh, is uh, the Alpine Rhine, Val Rhine Valley or so to say that the Lake Constance area. So here we have the four countries of Liechtenstein, of Switzerland, of Austria, and of Germany. So what we do now is the following. Today, uh, I'd like to present to you, I mean, two main themes on uh, what we do here in the region. The first one is a close cooperation with pilot companies. And uh, we will hear later on from uh, Andrea what this means uh, in praxis and we provide solutions like a toolbox for corporate mobility management. So the first thing when we speak about the close cooperation with pilot companies, um, the most important success factor for the model shift is a cooperation with the companies through the corporate mobility management. Why? I mean, it is obvious that the companies, they are the traffic generators, they define the framework conditions like the commandments, the prohibitions, the corporate culture. And what is another quite interesting factor, you have the social control by your colleagues. So once you tell your colleagues you want to go to work more often with uh, the bicycle, then of course they will ask you during the lunch break. And the second part that we see, or what we see here, is are the um, the pilot companies uh, we've already worked with in the area. I mean, there are some uh, well-known brands uh, among them, and when you look at them, I'm pretty sure you will know some of them. And we also have Habacon, where we'll hear something about later on. 
What we did in the past is uh, the Energy Institute of Vorarlberg, they developed a so-called uh, mobile check, uh, which is on the one hand side a survey tool and on the other hand side it offers the possibility to analyze uh, commuters' routes. So technical wise uh, just the address of the employee and the address of the employer uh, is put into that system and then the system calculates the potential routes how this person may go to work by car by bike by train by e-bike or even by walking and as you can see here with this example you see that nearly one third of all the employees have the potential to go to go to work by bike or or with the e-bike because they live just below 10 kilometers next to their workplace. I mean, this figure is, is uh, about 53 people, but if you imagine 53 cars less on the streets, then this even uh, makes an impact. So the th second thing uh, that we provided is a toolbox for corporate mobility management within uh, four categories. We have the analysis and basics, like I already said, with, like with the mobile check or also a vehicle census. Then we have the organizational measures, uh, home office, which is uh, very high on the agenda at the moment due to the pandemic and the free trial tickets uh, for the public transport. We of course have the very important fact of the, the infrastructure like bicycle parking facilities, the charging infrastructure, or also wet rooms. And then we have the info campaigns like the e-brake promotion, the cycling competitions, and so on. But we will hear the practical examples uh, later on from Andrea and the company of Habercon. So this is just uh, a quick picture on uh, yeah, the different measures uh, that we've developed so far. Uh, you can download them on our website. I will share a link with you uh, later on. And they are available in five languages, meaning all Alpine languages uh, and English. And please feel free to download and uh, to use them. So, but what is even more important and what we see also now during the pandemic is that sustainable mobility is active mobility. May it be the ride on a bicycle or may it be even or, or may it be walking uh, to the next public railway station or whatever. And therefore we have uh, now the Amigo project, which, which is in brief said just integrating active personal mobility into organizational health and mobility programs. And now I think you better understand uh, the title of our session. So my, my gym is my commute. So the idea is really to make people aware that when they commute to work sustainably by active mobility, like riding a bicycle or an e-bike or walking, this is, has really a good effect also on their health, on their health. And as you see here in this area, so we are dealing around the Lake Constance, as I already mentioned before, we have seven partners and we have 12 pilot companies. And uh, the project is funded by the European Union, which uh, have been all our projects are funded by the European Union, by the Canton of St. Gallen and by the country of, of Liechtenstein. And uh, so to say, without funding or without public funding, these projects uh, would not be possible. So what we try to do in the project is, so we want to link the corporate mobility management and the corporate health management. We want to develop implementation and evaluation of experiments in pilot companies. So we want to really provide uh, experimental showcases to make people see how good they feel when they go to work by bicycle or when they walk or when they take the train. And what is even more important is we develop recommendations for politics and administration on how to use the synergies between mobility and health management and how to provide funds <clears throat> or foster the development to bring these two things together. Because what we've uh, experienced so far is that within companies, uh, mobility and health management, they do not yet inter interrelate uh, with other when it comes to internal procedures. So the impact, of course, improved health of employees and the population due to reduced noise and air pollution. Then we have improved institutional cooperation in the project area between the countries of Liechtenstein, Austria, Switzerland, and Germany, and the region and the companies become more attractive uh, for skilled workers. So this is uh, 
my final picture. Uh, so we are really aiming uh, at having the bicycle more on the roads uh, than the cars. So I would say this picture is our vision um, that we are working on. So here you find the links uh, and I think the presentation, they will be shared uh, afterwards. So just click on them and there you can download uh, the different approaches uh, like the toolboxes and what we did before. And we also had a project uh, two years ago where we did a lot of uh, scientific research on the data of sustainable commuting uh, mobility in the Alpine region. And now, uh, thanks for that. And I will pass over now to my colleague, uh, Marlene, who will give you some more insight about the social science and the psychology aspect uh, of our project. Uh, Jakob, there was just a question in the chat. Um, there was a question of Giselle. I hope I spell it correctly. Is the way for commuting safe and attractive for cycling? Um, I mean, you know, when you, I don't know if, uh, Giselle, if you know the Alpen Rhine Valley, but it's, you have, you have mountains to the right and to the left, but you have a very flat land uh, due to the Lake Constance and there most of the people live and you have perfect conditions. What we have in the regions, uh, to say it, we have it all. We have perfect public transport, which is affordable. I mean, in the Vorarlberg region, you have uh, the 365 euros ticket a year. We have perfect bicycle lanes. Um, we have, you get, uh, you get also public funding uh, for commuting by the, by the companies or by the municipalities, but we still have lots of challenge to convince people to really let their cars at home and go to work by bike, by bus, uh, and by bicycle. And you ask, what about the cars? Uh, on the main lines, of course, you have a lot of traffic, but besides, you have perfect bicycle lanes that are really, really very wonderful and uh, attractive for cycling. And it's not mixed. So it's a single bicycle path and it's a single motor path. So you just partly have uh, to, to cross uh, the roads. That was just a perfect uh, advertisement somewhere in Austria. <laughs> so we have. But what uh, we have? We have answered your questions. Yeah. Jakob? But what we have, uh, we have, we have very strong wind. Uh, it's, there is no English word for it. Uh, it's called fern and we have it in these days. And then you really, when you have headwind, uh, it's not a lot of fun to cycle, to be honest. Mm. There was another question. What are the reasons people prefer the car? I think I will go into detail for that in my presentation. And, and please hello, Matthias. To, yeah. Hmm? Feel free yeah. to post questions. Uh, we are happy to answer them. Yeah. Is there any accompanying measure on the side of undertakings for making more attractive to go by bike instead of car use, like higher parking management costs? I think we probably answer the questions later on as well. Or do you want to say something, Jakob? Um, no, I think it's partly answered after the, the inputs of uh, you and Andrea. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I will try to share my screen. If that's possible, yeah. So one moment. Can you see my screen, Jakob? Can you answer me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. So, okay. So thank you very much, Jakob, for your presentation. So hello, everybody as well. My name is Marlene and I work um, at uh, just, um, hmm, I can't switch the slide now. Okay. I just, uh, here we go. Okay. So my name is Malene. I work at the AKS Gesundheit GmbH, which is located uh, in Bregenz. As you can see here, it is um, located at the beautiful Lake Constance in Vorarlberg, in the far western part of Austria, right next to the border of Liechtenstein, Switzerland and Germany. 
And our institution with, uh, with about 350 people working there is mainly offering healthcare services like neuro rehabilitation or services for kids like speech therapy. We do also have a science division as many health data from the whole region for Alberg. I mean, it's just 400,000 inhabitants, but still is streaming to our place. And last but not least, we are involved in different types of health promotion projects like Amigo. And my professional background is health promotion and public health. And therefore, I will discuss mobility link. Yes, I will bring you the news of today. And the news are the human body is built to move. Oh, what a surprise. We are not designed to sit. We have 650 muscles, about 140 joints. We can move. We are not rigid. Our skin is elastic. I guess this is not new to you. However, our life has become increasingly sedentary. We do not have to ride a horse to get from A to B. We have cars. My grandma, and I mean that's just two generations ago, was used to walk to school every day during summer and winter. The distance was six kilometers one direction. And I guess she was not in need of a gym. Today, kids are brought to school by car, which is around the corner, and there are traffic jams around the kindergarten. Nowadays, most of the jobs have become sedentary. Kids are sitting in front of the TV, in front of the computer, and they have to sit in school, which has an impact as well, as you can see here. This graph shows data of all overweight and obese pupils in Vorarlberg from 1993 up to the school year 2016-17. All lines are shown an increase over the years, but the higher the age shown by the different colored lines, the higher the percentage of pupils being overweight or obese. So for many kids, the life career of being overweight starts in school. And here is another graph where you can see clearly that the kids with normal weight, which is represented in green color, are just getting less and less. The physical activity fact sheet by the WHO for Austria shows that the amount of physical education in schools is quite limited. It's from two hours to up to four hours, but not all mandatory. So the rest of the school time, they are just sitting in their chairs. And the fact also that the estimated prevalence of sufficient physical activity levels is quite low. It's just 17% among the children and adolescents, 47% among the adults, and 24% among the older adults. This trend is seen also on a European level, where prevalence of sedentary behavior is rising as well. It is estimated to attribute to 1 million deaths, about 10% of the total, per year in the WHO European region. We can also see that worldwide for men, for women. And there is the problem. We thought we save time with inventions like cars. However, quite the opposite has become true. We have never been that busy ever before. So if we sum up the hours of a normal working day, like here in this chart, which is provided by the Heart Foundation of Australia, um, I will guide you now with this diagram through my personal day, for example. So we start in the morning and then, of course, the Heart Foundation would recommend to do a brisk walk of half an hour. I'm sorry, I do not have time to take a walk for half an hour. I have two small kids. It's quite busy in the morning, I can tell you. And um, so I ha we have to get ready to the kindergarten. Then I drive with the car, I have to admit, because my work is 35 kilometers away. So I drive to the kindergarten, then I drive to work. Of course, I sit, uh, I have a work on a computer. I sit there for four hours, eat my lunch, of course, sitting. Then again, working on the computer again, driving back home, picking up the kids. I mean, if I'm lucky, I can uh, go to the gym two to three times a week, but that's just when I'm really lucky. Otherwise, I have to um, do weightlifting with my kids or something like that. And um, then we are having dinner. 
um, again, of course, sitting and yeah, I do not have time anymore to watch TV um, because I'm just done at the end of the day and I just fall asleep with my kids. So um, where is time for physical activity now? And even if I go two to three times to the gym, it's just not enough. So to sum it up, sedentary behavior has been identified as an important health risk factor. It has an impact on personal health, back pain, and so on and so forth. Health organizations have recognized sedentary behavior as a mortality risk factor, and therefore it is a public health challenge with major health, social, and economic consequences. And here you can see the whole spectrum of health outcomes of physical activity and sedentary behavior. It affects at a positive bone health, quality of life, cognitive outcomes, sleep, dementia, etc., etc. So bad news, being a couch potato is not a good choice. And to summarize, inactivity is an ongoing pandemic, but I guess we will never have a dashboard for inactivity. And there is another fact, which is quite striking, and you probably all know better than me because I'm not a health environmental specialist. There are various studies providing evidence that air pollution is associated with health risks. Here are just a few from Austria. And data from Vorarlberg are participating also at the European ESCAPE study, where many publications have already been made. Also, I do not deny there are also critical views of the ESCAPE project, but we can definitely say air pollution has an impact on health. And uh, regarding to the questions before, here you can see again the landscape of um, the Rhine Valley. In the middle you have the Rhine Valley and just besides you have the mountains, the Alps. And in the middle or in this picture above you have the Lake Constance. And now let's have a look on the traffic situation of the Rhine Valley. As you can see here, um, the orange and the red colors just show crowded roads. And that's, for example, Friday 3 p.m. And you can see it on the motorways in Austria as well in uh, Switzerland. And if we have a look, for example, yesterday, 8 a.m., uh, around the cities like Felkirch, where I come from, it's just crowded everywhere. It's everywhere. It's orange lines or red lines. The same you can see in the middle picture around Dornbirn, Bregenz, and as well on the uh, on the Swiss side, like Au at the motorway, and as well in Liechtenstein, as you can see in Vaduz, all around Vaduz, for example. And of course, this has an effect on health, not just air pollution, also noise pollution, and so on. So here is the problem. We do not move enough. There is too much traffic. We do not have time anymore to move enough because and, and we sit when we are getting to our jobs. So here is the solution. Use your commute for physical activity. And that's what we are aiming for in Amigo. And a cohort study of England provides the evidence. Bicycle commuting was associated with reductions in all cause mortality, cardiovascular disease mortality, cancer mortality, and so on. Physically active commute modes, cycling, and train use have beneficial health effects. What, were our, what are our research questions? We are using quantitative and qualitative methods from a quantitative point of view. We ask, are more employees commuting actively at the end of the project compared to the beginning of the project? And are the active ones the healthier ones? Qualitative, we wanted to know what are the barriers and the supporting factors for active commuting and which solutions do the employees need? We have already done the assessment and the planning and the prioritization phase, and we are just at the beginning of the implementation phase. For the assessment, we conducted an employee survey, which was already introduced by uh, Jakob, the mobile check. And uh, here we had a closer look on the employees with commuting distances shorter than 10 kilometers and those with intention to behavior change. 
as we think it is better to put the effort in those people who really have the potential to switch or are already willing to switch to a more active mode. For analyzing the health outcomes, we use the WHO 5 Wellbeing Index and items of the SF36 Health Survey and as well as data to calculate the Body Mass Index. Results in detail because of data protection contract. However, overall research shows that COVID-19 had an effect on mobility behavior, of course. Some switched from public transport to the car or to the bike as well because they felt more safe. Of course, many stayed in home office, which had an effect on physical activity levels as well. And we also found out that employees show poor well-being, which we think is associated with COVID pandemic as well. Other Austrian studies show a massive decline in mental health as well because of the COVID-19 pandemic. People are just not seeing friends and uh, it's just all a little bit difficult. And third, we found associations between active commuting and health outcomes. However, they were not consistently. And very important, when uh, health items are used in mobility service, data privacy has to be taken into account even more seriously when health questions are included. Focus groups, we conducted uh, one focus group uh, at each pilot company or even two focus groups. Our pilot companies, as presented before by Jakob, they are um, represent different kinds of um, branches. So we have a governing authority, a hospital, energy supplier, production plans. So different kind of situations as well. Uh, the focus groups were done on person as well when possible. They took place for two to three hours, mostly three hours. Uh, we used purposeful sampling and we wanted to have um, participants who have the intention to behavior change. And our main focus was to find out the barriers, the supporting and but also the supporting factors which is already in place and what kind of solutions they would suggest. So this here is a picture of one uh, online focus group. But why are we conducting focus groups? That's the reason. You can see here an obesity system map, for example. In the middle, there is the balance, energy balance located and around all the factors influencing the energy balance. In orange, for example, the individual physical activity and that's the reason why it is not enough to just know how many people have a commuting distance shorter than 10 kilometers. The world is just more complex. And to, to dive into this complexity, we spoke with the employees. So what were the results from the focus groups? Um, we put the results into three different levels, uh, individual level, organizational level, and environmental level. And the barriers on the individual level were, of course, these are the reasons why they are not using or why they are using the car also that we have such a beautiful landscape and so beautiful um, uh, cycling lanes, is laziness, it's bad habits, it's also time issues, it's just stressful with small kids and bring them there and there and so on. It's also flexibility. Uh, safety issues in winter as well, when we have uh, a strong winter, like for example last um, last season. Um, women, of course, had uh, the problem with uh, care duties. Um, they take care of kids, but they also take care of uh, elderly people in their family, poor equipment as well, and personal dislikes. And the solutions they came up with were awareness, uh, awareness campaigns, group activities where they can motivate each other, role models should be used, and of course incentives. And they also, all the focus groups, saw a very good opportunity in e-bikes because um, they think it is quite an option for people who do not like to ride the bike very much 
to get them um, to uh, see the, all the opportunities of, of cycling. And it's not that difficult to ride a bike anymore. And to sum it up, it is, they said, incentives are better than punishment. Uh, communication concepts should focus on positive impacts and it should be an all-inclusive concept. So, so it should not only be a concept which targets sporty people, but uh, the focus should be on the daily routine and the daily physical activity. Results on an organizational level. Of course, there is our um, insufficient infrastructure like uh, lack of showers or fitting rooms, low costs for parking, inadequate accessibility. For example, if the company um, provides the possibility to use, for example, uh, bikes from the company, but they are just down in the basement. You have to go down in the basement and carry them up to the stairs. Uh, then, of course, the barrier is quite high. Uh, communication gaps. So if there are a lot of services available, but people do not know about it, unflexible working hours and also remote job locations. And solutions were, of course, infrastructure improvements. They have to be theft proof, especially nowadays because e-bikes are getting more and more and they are quite expensive. And higher costs for parking also, of course, it was also discussed quite in different directions um, because it would be a punishment. And closing the communication gaps, of course. Results on an environmental level. Uh, insufficient possibilities to use mix of transport, like using the bike uh, in combination with trains or buses. It is allowed in, in trains in Austria, but you have to buy a ticket for it. It's quite, or if there are two people with bikes in there, it is already packed. Weather conditions um, and unattractive, dangerous cycle lanes. So, um, their solutions were matching the working hours with the public transport schedules and the crowd, crowded roads should be used in the communi communication concepts as well. Of course, you will probably think this is not really new to me, but um, we have learned that focus groups provide information in depth, in completion to the survey results, it allows neat place uh, planning of interventions, it creates new ideas, it helps prioritization, and it reveals the good and the not so good. One mobility manager put it that way, a lean format with lots of output. So that's quite nice, I think. Uh, but online format, of course, requires different approaches than in person and is not suitable to all occupational categories if there are people who are not used to work with the uh, computer. And focus groups are an intervention by itself because we had quite a few people who changed their um, commuting mode after the focus groups. And um, the participation of the a mobility manager can be useful uh, because he or she can actually ask specific questions and outside of the company just can't know. But on the other hand, if the mobility manager uses the time as well just to justify himself why some kind of ideas are just not possible, then it's not a good solution. And the mobility, we also found out that the mobility culture, what is already in place, determines the spectrum of possible ideas of the participations. And that means when employees are used to mobility interventions by the employer, they dare to come up with great ideas. And um, I think I forgot one point, one bullet point. Uh, that the sampling strategy is critical as well and recru recruiting can be difficult. So one, uh, one saying was, for example, recruiting participants is time consuming because the topic is not priority to most of the employees. But now I will hand over to and that will show you um, really perfect, um, perfect company solutions.
<laughs> and I will just try to uh, stop my presentation. Did it work? Yeah. Okay. Yes, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> but Thank Malena, you. I believe you're a little bit exaggerating. <laughs> no, 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 no. The other one but we try. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I uh, will immediately share my presentation with you. Just one second. Um, okay, I believe it's better. So, can you already see my slides? Yes. Okay, great. Then uh, good morning from my side um, as well. I'm very happy to be part of this event today. And as uh, Jakob already mentioned, um, I just try to give you an overview how mobility or how corporate mobility management could look like, how it looks at Habercorn. Um, my name is Andrea Sutelutti, and I work as a sustainability officer um, at Habercorn since September 2019. Um, here or in this role, I accompany all topics concerning sustainability activities, including uh, employee mobility and mobility management. Um, I believe we, we are not those brands um, of Jakob's presentation you already know. I assume you won't know us. Also, we are quite a, a big company. We are actually the biggest um, technical equipment supplier in Austria. We uh, have the headquarter in Wolfurt for Alberg. Our customers are mainly uh, in the field of um, industry and construction. So we are a business to business uh, supplier. We already have um, subsidiaries in Austria, in Germany, in Switzerland, as well in, uh, as in Eastern and Southern Eastern Europe and come to 2,200 employees overall and have an annual turnover of 626 um, million euros. Mm. Our brand is, is quite important to us. I just want to show you, but do not want to read our brand positioning. In brief, we are the supermarket for construction and uh, industry in Austria. And one second, um, because this was a question of Giselle in the beginning, uh, you may see now um, Google Maps, just so that you know where are we. Here you see uh, Vorarlberg with uh, in the north the capital of Bregenz and in the south Dornbirn as the biggest city um, of Vorarlberg. And here quite in the middle we are. Um, close to the motorway and close to a very big um, road called the B190. So we have a good access um, to, the, uh, to the street system, but we do also do have a good uh, access to public transport as well as uh, biking lanes. So I um, put in the switch in the, the satellite photo. Um, I hope you can see it. Um, so here we have a nature conservation area. It's called the Lauterracherit, where you can um, use bike lanes there, as well as we have a bike lane directly close to the B190, where you um, are separated from uh, the street and have your bike lane. We have two bus stations at our company. So it's in the back entrance, there is one bus station, and in the main entrance, there is another bus station. Uh, and here we, we have working 440 people. And only a 10 minutes walk away, you get to the um, to the train station in Wolfwood. So there's really, really good access um, to uh, public transport system and biking lanes. Just, just to give you an impression how how privileged our situation is. Okay, good. Um, in or just to explain uh, how um, how we we see uh, employee mobility management or why it is so important to us. Um, I want to explain you our sustainability model. We started in two thousand and eight with a strategic process. 
to implement the sustainability strategy at Habercorn. And during this process, this sustainability model of us was created and it defines for us uh, what are the focus areas for a sustainability engagement. So what are the cornerstones? And our cornerstones you see in the inner circle are uh, employees, product services and processes. So we want to have um, our relationships uh, built um, with our employees on mutual respect. And here we also engage in uh, employee health management and employee mobility um, to uh, reduce our carbon footprint and to um, add value to the environment, just in very, very brief words. Um, okay. I said that we started with um, with this process in 2008, and I believe we can already be proud of some very impressive accomplishments. So between 2008 and 2009, so before uh, numbers uh, look better because of Corona pandemic, we could reduce our overall company carbon footprint by a third. We reduced the emissions of our carpool by 18.5%, uh, but increased the sum of kilometers traveled by train um, on business trips, so not the commuting, by 573%. Um, I believe that's, that's quite impressive. Uh, and what I almost forgot, since last year, we as a company work completely climate neutral, meaning that um, emissions um, of our company um, activities are compensated. Okay. And since we want to further reduce our carbon footprint and the commuting patterns of our employees have a high impact on this footprint, it is very important to us to positively influence their mobility patterns. Um, we uh, already have implemented before the Medio Imigo project, a wide range of activities to promote climate-friendly employee mobility. And here uh, we are focusing on uh, bike commuting, car sharing, public transportation. And for us, it is, it is very imp uh, important to build a mayor awareness amongst our employees. Um, I want to give you uh, an overview on the different activities we do in these fields um, over the next next slides. But before, um, just uh, two to three words to our motivation, why we, we do participate as a pilot company in the Amigo project. First of all, I already mentioned it, it's our company goal to further reduce carbon emissions um, of employee commuting. Uh, second, we, we see the synergies between employee health promotion that is important to us and um, mobility patterns. Um, and last but not least, um, we really benefit um, of the uh, expert knowledge, knowledge on um, creating interventions. On this point, a big thanks to Marlene and the uh, Energy Aus uh, Agency of Austria because we are really um, appreciating their help. We started with this Amiga pro program last fall and um, until now we did not have many uh, implemented, implemented measures but we conducted a survey um, with our employees on their mobility patterns. We identified how many of them we could potentially missionize to a more active and climate-friendly mobility um, and um, as um, Malene already described it, we conducted a workshop uh, with, um, with our employees, so a focus group. Um, okay, and out of that, we developed um, new ideas for, for our activity program. Okay. Um, I believe I will, will summarize <laughs> um, how this workshop uh, worked in, in the end. Um, now I want to come to my second or the second part of my presentation and give you this overview of what we do, what we are doing. 
Um, I will hop um, over most of the following slides and just say two to three words. So please feel free to contact me or ask uh, questions later on if you're interested in these um, activities and campaigns in more detail. Um, I already um, told you that awareness building is very important to us. Therefore, we have a so-called sustainability week uh, once a year in every subsidiary in Austria. It's always around the European Car Free Day. And there we have one day focusing on uh, employee mobility. And here we invite really all employees to not use their cars, at least at this day. Uh, and this is then really the day where nobody wants to be the one who is riding uh, to work with his car because he he would, would be shaming himself. Uh, here you see, um, see the empty parking lot or more or less empty parking lot. The cars uh, in the backside hopefully um, are of our customers who still are allowed to come, come with their cars. And maybe, but generally maybe, our employees also get a goodie if they um, do not use a car on this day. And over the last years, we also donated a certain amount for, um, for every uh, climate-friendly commute on this day. Um, I already mentioned our sustainability week. Here we also have a lottery where every day people can win some money when not driving to work or at least when coming in a carpool. Um, if we do not find a winner two to three days in a row because uh, he or she was coming by car, uh, there can be quite a big amount of money in the pot and people are really have, happy if they win. So uh, we, are, we are trying to motivate them, to incentivize them and not to penalize them. them. Um, Another goodie <laughs> is our mobility breakfast. This is from March until July. Um, here, every employee gets breakfast for free once a week if he or she was coming um, by bike, carpooling, uh, or public transport this week, or at least he was coming predominantly by um, not, not with his car or her car. Um, we also want to highlight the fun part of climate-friendly, active and healthy mobility. Therefore, we regularly organize some fun test events. Last year, we had some cool cargo bikes at our company so that uh, employees could test them. And this year, it may be uh, recumbent bikes to test. Um, sorry. Okay. Um, I already mentioned that sustainability um, is for us a strategic pro uh, process and it is really part of our company DNA um, and live, we live it through, um, throughout all hierarchical, hierarchical levels. Here you can see the head of our management board, he's a convinced bicycle rider himself. And we really, we really have lots of department heads that are coming uh, with bike or even with bus and train. Um, I also believe that um, it is important to make things transparent and easy accessible and to make bus and train uh, departure times more transparent. We have installed a monitor uh, showing the different connections and also possible delays in real time. So you immediately see the monitor when you enter or exit uh, the building through the main, door, uh, main entrance. <laughs> we, we really like to, to make good as I see that. <laughs> this is another one. Uh, but I think it's, it's important because um, good working equipment is, is more fun than, than the bad stuff. And therefore, at least uh, once a year, all employees get a free one. Depending on the location where they are working, this is either a voucher or um, they just bring their bikes to work and it is serviced there and even washed there. Here we have a quite modern bike washing machine. Okay. Um, our headquarters, as I already mentioned, is, is quite close to the, to the next train station. It's in a 10 minute walk. Uh, but it's even um, shorter and closer if uh, you use a bike. 
Therefore, um, there you only need three minutes and therefore we bought some bikes and pos positioned them with a combination lock and all uh, the same combination at the train station and an employee who wants can uh, use the bike in the morning to ride to, um, ride to the company and um, bring it back, back in the evening. Okay. Promotion of public transport. Um, transport. Um, we furthermore promote this public transport. So um, all new employees automatically receive a two week, and, uh, two week free test ticket for the public transport to, uh, um, to come to work when they are starting their new job. So we don't even ask them, they just get it sent. Um, we always try to inform our employees um, of um, different offers of bus and train and the connections, like you see it in the picture. And we also subsidize the bus and train tickets of our employees. Okay, now <laughs> I'm, I'm quite close to the, the end and I saved my favorite activities for this part. So um, one of them is the so-called eco points. Um, three years ago, we implemented this incentive system for climate friendly commuting of our uh, employees. It's this eco points as I mentioned it and every day an employee uh, comes to work either by bus, by bike, by train, by foot, or in a carpool. So not only if he doesn't, uh, he comes to work so um, single a single user of his car. Uh, he or she gets a certain amount of um, so-called eco points, um, and after some time, you can swap them against different prices in our eco points shop. For those who, who speak German, <laughs> here are the prices. Um, they are either vouchers for public transport or um, vouchers for sports shops, or um, they can have um, organic, organic and regional food massages and so on. It is uh, a small thank you gift, but it is for every single uh, climate friendly and active commute. So if someone only gives up his car once a week, he also gets a reward for that. Someone who does it more regularly, more frequently, gets a higher uh, reward, logically. Um, and if it has bad weather, you get, get more reward than a uh, higher reward if it has, has good weather. Okay. Um, was it Malene or, or Jakob? I believe it was Malene who was um, telling us that the uh, that e-bikes are quite popular. Uh, and this is another um, campaign that we have conducted. It's an e-bike leasing campaign. And I have to say, or I can summarize, that this is really one of the uh, activities with the highest impact um, on our employees' mobility patterns. We um, conducted this campaign twice. The last time was last year, where we um, had about 10% um, of all our employees in Wolfurt that participated in the campaign at least um, an e-bike wire our company. Um, many people that refused riding a bike before um, have uh, really changed their mobility patterns. And how does this campaign basically work? It's, it's quite simple. The employee chooses his or her favorite bike from uh, a prior defined um, seller. Habocon buys the bike for them. And the employee um, just leases it back over four years. And the leasing fee is subtracted from uh, the monthly salary, which was really good. Uh, good um, um, campaign. Okay. Um, last but not least, uh, we also promote carpooling. It's, it's not so active, but just to give you a holistic picture, I also added that. Um, so carpoolers can also collect eco points. They also can use privileged and reserved parking spots um, close to the main entrance 
we only reserve parking, parking spots for carpooling, for customers and for visitors. So um, our management does not have any reserved um, parking spots, of course, would not work with, with, with our understanding of, a, um, of ourselves. Okay, and um, employees, either if they have come to work via carpooling or with um, bike, by foot, uh, train or bus, they can use our pool cars during the day to um, make doctor visit and, um, and other private uh, appointments. Um, furthermore, and just, just to, to close up, um, our pool cars can be borrowed for a small fee for private use on evenings and weekends as well. Espe especially families uh, can therefore dispense their second car and people use it, um, use it very frequently. Okay, um, so to, to finish my presentation, um, as I already mentioned it in the beginning, we have implemented a lot of different measures. This was only um, a few of them to influence the uh, mobility patterns of our employees. So before the workshop with Marlene, I really, or, or at least a little bit doubted um, that we can find a lot of, of new stuff and new ideas because there's already um, a whole bundle of it. And we said that it would be a success if we could at least improve existing activities and campaign, campaigns to better meet the needs of our employees. <laughs> but what a surprise. <laughs> our employees that participated in the focus group were super creative and we came out with a huge program after this workshop. And I really believe that um, there are some really good ideas in this program. Um, you won't ca I won't be able to read it, but just to, to give you an expression, uh, impression, this, this are a lot of, of ideas. I just want to mention two of them as an example. Next year, we want to install uh, a group called 60 Days on the Bicycle, where uh, employees voluntarily can try to consequently change their mobility patterns over two months. Um, and another idea would be the, the campaign bike for a month, where we will choose some very special bikes like fat bikes, cargo bikes, bamboo bikes, and give them um, to the employees for a month to try them for free and will um, accompany this um, campaign via, via, via social media. Okay. <laughs> This was a lot of input, uh, but for me, it was very important to give you an, an overview how we uh, how we um, try to uh, influence our employee, um, give you some flashlights on our company mobility management. Okay, thank you. I have to go back there. No. Thank you. Okay, thanks Andrea, thanks Marlene uh, for your very interesting uh, inputs. Um, so as you've you've seen now, we, we started at the very bottom, so why is commuter mobility uh, important for the Alps, then going through social sciences and defining so also in uh, the health management and then coming to a concrete example with the company of Habercon. Um, there have been some questions uh, raised in the chat and I encourage you to uh, really just type in your questions to the chat. We are happy to, to answer them. And uh, maybe first questions for you, Andrea. There are two questions uh, from uh, Giselle. She's asking, do you have a bike and an e-bike hiring system? I think this is partly answered. And the second one is, do you participate at Bike to Work? I mean, it's switching. Okay. We have an e-bike uh, e -bike promotion system, as I already mentioned it. We also discussed it for regular bikes, um, but did not um, did not decide on that because we say in Austria uh, or in Vorarlberg, everyone has already a good bike. And if they uh, want uh, a bike for 2000 euros, it's only for sports uh, in private. And there is not, this is not the responsibility for us as an employer. Um, 
um, if I uh, go to work by bike, I'm very motivated, but I um, have a, um, have about 20 kilometers to, to Habercorn. So I try to do that once a week. I'm not the most sportive, not the most sportive person, um, but once a week is at least my motivation for the summer and um, I try it. Okay. And uh, do you participate in Bike to Work? Bike to Work, 60, um, 60 days. Uh, we, no, I we think it's, it's the same like the, the Fahrradwettbewerb in Vorarlberg. Ah, yes, I participate in it. And Habercon does it as well, of course. So for um, all Austrian subsidiaries, as well as um, for our Swiss subsidiary, because this one is close to the to the border to Vorarlberg. But um, we, we also have companies in Germany, as I mentioned, or in, in Eastern or Southern Eastern Europe, they do not have this um, this program, or at least I'm not informed about that. But here, for um, the international subsidiaries, we are just trying to um, to um, integrate our sustainability model in these companies. And um, actually, we're starting this year with the to two um, topics of of employee health and um, mobility management. Okay, thanks. Uh, I can ask this question also for, for Liechtenstein as I'm working with uh, the Liechtenstein pilot companies and uh, they do not participate in bike to work because they have an own system uh, which is just called uh, Fahrradwettbewerb uh, Liechtenstein and there the companies, uh, they take place and they also do some uh, internal communication efforts to motivate uh, their people and even motivate groups to participate. So are there some more questions? Um, maybe I come back to the question raised by Matthias uh, earlier on about the accompanying measures or the side undertakings for making more attractive to go by bike instead of car, like higher parking management costs. Um, what we see in the area here is that some uh, companies, they have invented uh, parking management but uh, most of them they are so far uh, a bit uh, restrained because the the culture is uh, that they want to foster uh, bottom up procedures and uh, not top down as we've uh, heard with the with the eq point system so every day you get a you get a benefit uh, when uh, commuting sustainably then this uh, will change things um, on the long run um, but also on the other hand side, what we've heard partly in the focus groups, and that was uh, quite interesting for me, that um, those companies who already have parking management, some people just uh, mentioned um, that it's not expensive enough. So yeah, the company should increase the fees that uh, really the big shift uh, is going to happen. But uh, this, of course, uh, is an answer that people can give who have the opportunity or, or, or who could use uh, other transport modes. And, and maybe who work in Liechtenstein. <laughs> and maybe work in Liechtenstein. I just know, but the, the, I think some of the, the, the Liechtenstein banks, they, they have this system. But uh, when it comes to parking management, um, most of them, they also have uh, reasonableness uh, criteria. So if you have the chance to go by bike, by bus, by train, whatever, the fee is higher. If you do not have the chance because uh, you live somewhere up in the mountains, uh, then the fee is, uh, is lower. Maybe I add something from the focus groups there, uh, because um, it was also quite interesting that um, it was in every focus group, it was a topic, the parking costs. Some of the people said they don't think it will change a lot if the parking costs uh, are just higher or they are not allowed anymore to park there because uh, they just the people who want to drive their car, they just park in the surrounding area. And then the problem is just moved to another place. <laughs> I think that has to be considered as well. So are there any more? Yes. Maybe I add something something else to this discussion about parking fees. Um, 
we implement this uh, system in the communities or in the municipalities close to uh, to our companies and here they have made very good experience and it doesn't depend it doesn't really depend on on the the uh, amount how high the parking fee is um, for us as employer the situation is always quite um, difficult because we are here in a battle for um, or to be attractive as an as an employer and therefore um, it's more intense incentivation than um, than punishment and we are here a little bit like reluctant just just from our point of view uh, Giselle just mentioned in the chat that in her office uh, they have to apply for a parking place, uh, which is a kind of a nice uh, idea. But uh, maybe you can just post or you, you can uh, come to the stage, uh, Giselle, if you want to present that example or give us some insights of where you're working and how how is it uh, how is it executed. So what do you have to do to apply for a parking lot? So maybe you can can post it in the chat, or I also think there is uh, right above there is a, a function where you allowed to to join the stage. As a federal office of public health in in Switzerland, so yeah, as we we know with uh, all the transport and mobility issues, uh, Switzerland is is always ahead, and uh, yeah, we we have uh, to follow the good examples um, of of Switzerland. And there must be good reasons to get a parking place, and uh, you just have to to argue them. What what we also see here in the region. So, are there any other questions or comments uh, or things you would like to discuss or raise? We have five minutes left, but uh, there's really no pressure. Like the distance and the bad connections uh, with with trains. So that's uh, that's the reason for the Federal Office of Public Health in Switzerland to get a parking lot or to not get a parking lot. So if there are no more questions uh, or comments, then I will start. Now there's one, some final sentence as a message to my country. I, you should, for the Czech Republic, From whom do you want to have some messages, uh, Yitka? From from uh, the Habakon company? Because I actually, I'm not aware of the circumstances of the Czech Republic, uh, as we are just have an Alpine focus, but um, that maybe the, the toolbox for corporate mobility management I presented before, that's not at all Alpine specific. Uh, so you could use this uh, on a European or even at a global level, because the measures, they are the same uh, anywhere to, to uh, reduce the individual uh, car mobility. Ah, many politicians say Czech, the Czech Republic is hilly, so no chance for cycling. Um, you can tell them uh, <laughs> you've joined a conference at the PEP uh, where people in the Alps presented uh, some things about how people in the Alps commute. And with the e-bike, uh, we saw really a tremendous uh, increase in people commuting with the e-bike because then hills there really not a problem and when you have uh, companies who support their employees in uh, buying e-bikes then it's uh, then it's even better but uh, for you um, you can just look uh, at our website so www.sepra.org there we have uh, lots of uh, examples on really how to convince the people but at the end, or to conclude, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the circumstances here in the area, they are quite good. We have the companies and we also have the infrastructure. And now with this project, we really want to find out so what is the trigger in 
people's heads to convince them to commute sustainably really on the long term on the long run and uh so feeling better or health aspects or even mental health aspects uh, could be a good trigger to really make people use their bikes or even their e-bikes much more because uh, when we look at the time and when we look at climate change i think uh, we have all have to change our daily behavior um yeah to reduce the negative impacts of climate change so if there's nothing more to say from you andrea or malene i would like to thank you and yeah enjoy the other sessions at the pep conference and for any questions whatever uh, feel free to contact us uh, at all time and yeah happy cycling uh, for yourself <laughs> bye 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 thank you